Hello and welcome. Well, in this season, we've got more inventions for you. This time, the compass. We've also got a story familiar to anyone who has grown up in China. Mencius' mother moves three times. We also delve into the world of myth and legend with the story of the anger of the Lord of Heaven, who was about to destroy humankind, but was thwarted in his aims, both by his compassionate daughter and human ingenuity. Destruction is also the theme of another of our myths, with a rather tragic ending about nine dragons who are finally killed by the great sage king Shun. Now, we're telling you these myths with a purpose, mind you. They both help to explain important aspects of Chinese culture. We then move to the 19th century to celebrate the life of Lin Zexu and his dramatic seizure of illegally trafficked opium. Finally, we discuss a modern hero, a man who took customer service to new levels. 大家好，欢迎来到第五集。我们会有关于发明的故事，指南针，有耳熟能详的孟母的故事。我们也会带你探寻神话传奇，有关于天地的愤怒的故事。他差一点毁灭了。人类文明，但最终危机被天地女儿和人民所瓦解。还有一个悲伤的故事，那就是与恶龙战斗的舜的故事。这两个神话故事的目的是为了帮助你们理解中国传统文化的来源。之后，我们会把时间移到十九世纪，来歌颂林则徐以及他禁毒的故事。最后。我们会讲一个现代伟大的人物，一个全心全意为顾客服务的人。孟母的故事之所以重要，不是因为她是孟子的妈妈的故事，而是这个故事提供了一个跨越世纪的母爱版本。这个故事最早的版本是来自汉代书记《面女传》，作者叫刘湘。其实。我们不能确定这个故事的真实性，又或者孟母是否真正办了三次家，但是抛开历史准确性不谈，这个故事的真实意义在于它的古老性，可以追溯到至少两千年之前。任何古老的世代流传的故事都是有意义的。因为它体现了核心价值观，任何体现中华文化核心价值观的故事，都值得讲给外国人听。所以，孟母三迁揭示了什么核心价值观呢？首先，这个故事展示了教育子女的重要性；然而，更重要的是，父母为了子女受到好的教育而做出的牺牲。孟子的母亲不仅非常努力工作来支持儿子，同时他还愿意搬家，让他的孩子享受更幼稚的环境。即使在现代的社会，搬家也是一个大工程。在古代，人们经常世世代代待在一个地方，所以搬家在古代的社会。就意味着远离你熟悉的社会关系，也意味着你要彻底改变自己，适应一个新的环境。因此，搬家对于孟母来说意味着巨大的牺牲。当然，现代社会的人们对于这个故事可能会有一些质疑，例如，孟母让孩子错过了许多人生体验是正确的吗？他不应该让孩子们多经历一些事情吗？除了学术以外，孟母似乎对于某些职业也抱有歧视的心态。不过，这个故事的内核是一代人为下一代人的牺牲，让下一代人接受更好的教育。这种中国父母希望下一代超越自己的愿望，到今天依旧强烈。我想，这就是中国在过去三十年到四十年拥有巨大变迁的原因。好的，现在轮到诵读部分，我先把这个故事的英文版本从头到尾诵读一下
Mencius's mother moves three times. Mencius's surname was Meng, and his given name was Ke. He lived in the Warring States period and became a representative of the Confucian school of philosophy. Mencius was a thinker and teacher in ancient China over 2,000 years ago. When Mencius was very young, his father died and his mother relied on weaving to support her family. They lived a hard life. The place where they lived was not a nice one, being close to a cemetery. Mencius and the neighborhood children used to learn the prostrations and wailing of the mourners and play mourning games. When Mencius's mother saw this, she could not help frowning. She said, how can the future be bright for my child in this way? She decided to move away from that place. The new house was not far from a noisy market. Mencius and the neighborhood children then started to play at doing business. They learned the cries of the adults as they called out to customers and haggled over prices. They had lots of fun doing this. When Mencius's mother saw this, she could not help frowning. She said, how can the future be bright for my child in this way? This was not good either, so they had to move again. There was no market near the new home, but there was a butcher's shop instead. Mencius often ran there, attracted by the hustle and bustle. He learned nothing but how to slaughter animals. But when Mencius's mother found out, she frowned again. She said, this place is not a suitable one for my child to live in. Thereupon, they moved again. This time, they moved near a school. The classroom had clean windows and neat desks. The teacher was a gentlemanly person. There was no hubbub, only the clear sound of reading and reciting. Mencius's mother nodded her head in satisfaction. This is the right living environment. Thereupon, she decided never to move anymore. Mencius, book bag on back, started to go happily to school. However, after a while, he grew dissatisfied and started to play truant. On one of these occasions, he returned home. His mother, who was weaving at the time, saw that he had come home early and knew that he was playing truant. Angrily, she picked up a pair of scissors and cut the piece of cloth she had been weaving. Mencius, seeing the neat cloth cut in two, realized that his mother was angry and quickly knelt down before her. His mother said sternly, Study is like weaving cloth. Cloth must be woven shuttle by shuttle and study must be pursued day by day. Only with the accumulation of days and months can success be attained. Your playing truant like this, giving up your studies halfway, is like cutting into a piece of cloth. Your previous efforts are wasted and you will achieve nothing in the future. Mencius then burst into tears. Then, raising his head, he said, Mother, I was wrong. I will never play truant again. From this time on, he applied himself diligently to his studies. Later, Mencius became the representative of the Confucian school of philosophy, ranking as the second sage to Confucius himself. In fact, Confucianism came to be called the Way of Confucius and Mencius. It was not only because of moving that the truant boy became the second sage. We can easily imagine there are many men who live near schools, and if that was all that was needed to produce Mencius, there would have been lots of Menciuses. No, it was because Mencius sensed his mother's disappointment and understood her feelings that he was able from that moment to devote himself to his studies. Our mothers may not be able to take us to new places, but they are all anxious about our growing up properly. The moral of this story. This anecdote shows how Mencius's mother gave her son a firm foundation with her advice and how Mencius repaid her by using her teaching to achieve success. This story of a mother's teaching and a son's filial duty has presented a model mother-son relationship to the Chinese people for thousands of years. Okay, let's do some recitation practice. In this passage, we're going to practice both using our voice to convey Mencius's mother's anger and also using our voice to convey the action of her cutting the fabric in half. 
好的，我们来练一点诵读技巧。那么在这一段，我们将要用声音体现孟母的愤怒，并且用声音展现他剪开布料的那个动作。我们来听一听。His mother, who was weaving at the time, saw that he had come home early and knew that he was playing truant. Angrily, she picked up a pair of scissors and cut the piece of cloth she had been weaving. Mencius, seeing the neat cloth cut in two, realized that his mother was angry and quickly knelt down before her. His mother said sternly, "Study is like weaving cloth. Cloth must be woven shuttle by shuttle, and study must be pursued day by day." Now, in the first sentence, we are simply setting the scene, so we just need to keep a fairly neutral tone of voice. But then, in the next sentence, we need to emphasise the word "angrily" to convey her emotion, but also the word "cut," which should reflect the sudden, dramatic action. 在第一句话，我们需要简单的设立场景，所以我们需要保持平稳的语气。然后在下一句，我们需要强调单词 angrily 来表现孟母的情感，并且强调动词 cut 来展示突然的戏剧性的动作。我们来听一听 ，angrily she picked up a pair of scissors and cut the piece of cloth she had been weaving. In the next sentence, our tone of voice must completely change because now we need to reflect. Mencius's mood, which is not anger, but remorse. 在接下来一句，我们的语调必须变化，因为我们需要展示孟子的感情，不是愤怒的，而是是懊悔的。我们来听一听。Mencius, seeing the neat cloth cut in two, realized that his mother was angry and quickly knelt down before her. Okay, let's listen to the whole passage again. His mother, who was weaving at the time, saw that he had come home early and knew that he was playing truant. Angrily, she picked up a pair of scissors and cut the piece of cloth she had been weaving. Mencius, seeing the neat cloth cut in two, realized that his mother was angry and quickly knelt down before her. His mother said sternly, "Study is like weaving cloth." Cloth must be woven shuttle by shuttle, and study must be pursued day by day. 好的，今天的课就讲到这里了。欢迎大家下次来收看。